Alrighty, battery charger on. Let's see if it starts. I doubt it. These batteries are freaking junk. Hello, light. Nothing. Fun. So, after our rain delay of rye, I got some more time to work on my project remote control tractor here. And uh, I kind of was a little bit worried on knowing if the PTO was fully on or fully off. The throttles, you can hear that, so that's no big deal. So, I came up with a good idea. And thanks to some Amazon shipping, I now have these limit switches. So when the lever comes up here, it'll hit the switch. And when it's fully off, it'll come back and hit this switch. And then I'm going to wire those switches up to come up to this very crudely made signal box. So when it's off, you get red light. When it's on, you get green light. I, in theory. So we'll see. These are pretty straightforward. Your main power comes in here and then just depending if the switch is open or off, it comes out one of these. So I should have power in and I'll just have one wire on one side of these for when they're tripped. And it'll run power up to these and I might have to run uh, how is this going to work so I'll run two wires one signal from each which will go to the positive on those lights and then I might have to run a ground wire and I have a chunk of extension cable there which is three wires so I might have to get creative on that but it should work Correction on that last one. So I need two wires for positive. That'll come one off each switch. So go up to there, which hook into those. And I'll pigtail those grounds. So I got two for each light and one ground. I think I knew that and that's why I grabbed a three wire instead of just running like a dual speaker wire. So I knew that. I just just remembering. Alrighty, moment of truth here. Uh, the red light should come on. And green light, green light. Alright, so my lever's kind of locked in there, but let me, uh... Oh, I figured now was a good time as ever to just try the actuators again. Why not, right? Uh, oh, I forget how these are set up. See? Yeah, there we go. Alright. This will be D, which is PTO on. Oh. Alright, let's turn the PTO off for a second. Oh, there it is. Alright, turn it on. She's going forward. And she's on. I think that is all the way on. It'll trigger the light a tick soon, but I'm pretty sure that's that's almost all the way forward. I mean, that's as far as it'll go. And it's still on there, still on. There, it turned off. I think that'll work. I just wanted to make sure that this thing cleared good enough. And since it's kind of a funky angle on that roller. And that's all she'll do. That looks like pretty good clearance. And the light's even on. So, you hit your button. To turn the video on. 
Light will go out. Let you know it's moving. And then bam, you know the PTO is on. PTO is on. I'm I'm kinda getting good at this stuff. Look at that. That's pretty neat. PTO off. Or no, PT, yeah. PTO is going off. And it lets you know it's all the way off. How much more simple can you be? Um, I'm putting a new starter on this one, on this solenoid. And then discovered my batteries are good, but only for like two weeks. So I don't know if we'll get around to putting batteries in it for this year. It's got like two days of pumping manure left, so. All the actuators are still rigged up. I'm gonna let it charge for a while and maybe that light even goes off. But new starter, I'll let the batteries charge up and we'll fire it up. Good day. Good, good day. Maybe try to clean up this wiring a little bit. I wanna be able to move that box from that fender over to that fender, depending on where you're pumping from, so. I gotta kinda keep it able to move. This extension cord is old and hard and if you bend it too much it breaks, so not it's not that bad. It's just really stiff. Look at that. First try. It's backing up season. And season is good. And that is how easy hooking something up is when you back it up perfect. You gonna do the PTO now? No? Alrighty. New battery day and hopefully this thing will start. Let's see new batteries, starter solenoid, and starter. So anything short of that, I got no idea what's wrong. This should do it. Well, I could not have gotten a physically larger battery in there. One thousand cold cranking amps. Hopefully this does it. If it doesn't, I quit. I'm just done. Might need a little more throttle. Huh? Might need a little more throttle. You got a remote? Oh, I got it. I pulled the pin. Oh, ether. I lost some ether. the pump backed in it's running the remote seemed to be working except for one little detail I put a label on them and uh, my throttle is backwards but that's pretty minor otherwise it works I got it stirring right now and I don't I can't remote control that currently so okay. I'm gonna back this one in 
I'll have to go over, switch it to fill, and then we should be good to go. Well, we got load number one all loaded up. The uh, remote control worked awesome. I did shut the tractor off just so I could hear it. And the tractor really only revs up to about half throttle, which I thought it'd be a little more, like three quarters of the throttle, but it's funny. They are a little slow, so you kind of got to be on the ball pretty quick. I spilled a little. As, as I kind of get used to it, that should get better. Um, so far, everything works. Um, my dad is filling a load of his right now out there, and that's going to be the real test of this whole thing. Old people and technology and whatnot. So. We're going to get to spreading, and I'm going to stop recording for a while, because with another vast improvement of technology means I can stream video while I'm hauling manure, and that's what I do. channel it 
doesn't matter too much right now hauling right behind the farm nice and close there isn't much time in between loads that the uh, pump is sitting there but what I would have done was get a six channel I would have got a bigger actuator to control the door on our pump it'll either suck it out of the pit out the spout to load the tank or it'll suck it up and then just blow it back and that does is stir it up and it's a good thing to get it stirred up. You can haul out more loads liquid, which you can haul 3,000 gallons liquid versus, you know, if it doesn't get stirred up, you gotta haul it out in the slinger spreader, which it ain't, it ain't you know, tiny by no means, but it ain't 3,000 gallons. And hauling them in liquid, hauling manure in liquid form just, it's a lot easier, I think. But anyway, I would have put an actuator on that door. Right now it's hydraulic, but it wouldn't be much just to pull the pins on that hydraulic. Put an actuator in there, run the wires so it's controlled with the remote again. And then you'd have that right on the remote too, so you could switch it. So when you're hauling farther away, you know, it's going to be a few minutes or even longer at all. 10-15 minutes in between loads where it makes sense to switch it you can still agitate it right now we can't do that but like I said it ain't the biggest deal in the world so all in all it's a hundred bucks I'd do it again I can't I, it should last a while everything on there but the board itself is weatherproof and I got that protect, protected pretty good so as long as the cows don't come up and chew all the wires off it should work out pretty good. First day for hauling manure. This tractor started beautifully. I can't say so much for that white. I haven't tried it yet and it got down right to about 20 degrees last night. So we'll see. We'll see how well she wants to fire up this morning. Got brand new batteries that it's had charged up all day along with the new starter and starter solenoid so you should at least crank for a while we're getting that motor to pop probably take a little ether help no oh, alrighty I bet we're gonna need that I right, get a can up here Deactivate the remote control for it. So, in the process of me crawling around starting the tractor, I accidentally stopped recording. So you guys missed out on an epic, angry, smoky, cold start. Sorry, I'm new at this yet. But, uh, anyway, it did start. It took a lot of cranking and finally I just gave up and gave her a little ether and popped off. Away we go. The remotes are still working good today and hopefully we got Plenty of slurry left in the pit. That'll still pump out good because once it quits pumping, then we got to switch over to slingers, and that's it's it's not as easy, convenient as uh, pumping liquids. When you get the solid spurs out, that's when it, it gets real time consuming. To get around 30 degrees or so the old slurry really thickens up and it is like pulling us from that block behind you 
You know, I tell you, alfalfa is right at the top of the list for a plant that is hard to get established and keep around. Unless you no-till corn into it and spray it off. And then look out, because it just refuses to die. It's amazing. You can fertilize it, get it seeded just perfectly, have great weather, and sometimes still end up with just dud. But, if you no-till corn into it, my God, does it grow. Well, we have a problem. Yeah, you can't quite see it, but there is one tire that don't look like the other. And I would almost bet money we got a broken axle. Not me. I, I don't do things like that. I don't break things. Dad, on the other hand, broke it. That is a broken axle. See how them tires are kind of leaning different? That's what happens when you go through a little ditch. Don't go through a little ditch. Well, we are now down to just this manure tank. So, that means productivity just got cut in half. Which is always fun to see. But, we're going to keep on keeping on. I guess I might as well hang you guys around now. You can watch this remote control tractor in action. Yep, there we're running over. Shut her down. We make quite a mess. That's all it is to it. Ideally, we do that before it runs over like that. But hey, it's it's pretty thick so it doesn't give you much of a splash warning. That their manure tank is missing an axle. You could probably see that better if my windshield wasn't so dirty. Well, it quit pumping. That doesn't necessarily mean that there's no manure left in it. You can see it's pretty deep back here but pretty shallow up here so overnight most of that should slump forward and because there will be a pocket of slurry back towards the back end there so I'm just gonna pull her out let that all work its way forward overnight and probably be back to it tomorrow I do have, I don't know, maybe a half load in there before I quit pumping. But I sat around and parked it uphill, so hopefully any manure that's left in there will drain out. And that'll keep it tight. It's got a few hours of 50 degrees, I think it is. So, it should all drain out. Because when that thing freezes, there's there ain't much you can do. Alrighty, we're going to have a second attempt at cold start video here. Let's see if I can actually do it without uh, accidentally stopping recording. We have to raise that throttle a little. That'll do. Ether.
goes. Oh, we're gonna raise up the throttle a little bit. And just a little more ether. I can suck out of there it uh, I'm hoping there's only eight ten loads if there's more that'd be all right because that's less I have to haul out with the slinger so I'm betting this one will start a lot easier He's cake. And that is just another reason why I pulled the original motor out of that 2150 white and put an A3 Cummins in it. trouble pumping dad's out there now with the skid motor kind of pushing kind of making like a little dam around the uh, pump so hopefully we can get it all and we'll get as many loads as we can now but I'm guessing today's gonna be the last day for sure then we'll switch over to slingers and then we'll have to start loading it all with the skid loader so it's I it's a little slower if you just got two people going if you got more than that to the point where one guy can just sit in the skid loader and there's a spreader there all the time getting filled going in and out then it actually goes pretty quick but for the most part if you just got two guys going it it don't seem to go very fast which is why I like hauling with tanks getting it out of slurry a lot more well, I just got out and I crawled up there and checked it. And it's pretty much running at the rate of two garden hoses. So it's gonna take a while, but it is still running. So we're gonna keep on pumping till absolutely nothing comes out no more. Well, 
that load was a royal pain to get spread. And as fast as that pump is pumping it, I think I'm just going to pull it. And we're going to switch over to solids. Uh, Dad actually already hauled a couple loads with a slinger. And I see the V-bottom spreader just showed up over there. So, I will probably unhook pull the drain so there is a manure sitting down in the impeller over winter and probably haul a couple loads out with that and using the slingers and the V bottom spreaders we will fully empty the pit so that's gonna be a long long winter time project Unless a bunch of people want to show go, up. Go down there. I'm going down there. Unless a bunch of people want to show up and then we can knock it down. Knock it out in a month. So, heads up. That's what the next videos are going to be. It's just me. All in the with that. Maybe not all of them. As far as field work concerns, it'll just be all in the dirt, but try to be in the shop. I want to get a bunch of stuff done on that white. Get that cab all cut up. Pieces of metal welded in and fixed. And I still haven't decided if I'm going to paint it yet. I want to, but as much as I want to, I don't want to. I just leave it ugly. But we'll see. I'll probably end up painting.